there's there's kind of this apocryphal story that the switch in New York, I think New York and London, I've heard kind of both sides of the story, both New York and London. They had so many horses that manure was becoming like a huge problem. One stat, and again, this is more than 100 years ago, so who knows exactly. It said, at the turn of the 20th century, New York had an estimated 100,000 to 200,000 horses on the street, creating 25 to 30 pounds of manure each, or more than 3 million pounds a day. Wow. Um, yeah. So that led, according to some, the development of the New York subway. I guess the point I'm getting at is, is potentially you had a situation where the issue was so obvious that it was kind of unavoidable and, and it wasn't, it like wasn't up for debate. Like anyone could look at it and say, okay, this manure is a problem. You know, we got to find a better way to yeah. do this. Yeah. So fast forward to the 20th century. I, I've seen, seen stories and reports dating back to like the late 1940s. Smog in the LA basin was really bad. I think the 50s to the 70s, it kind of reached a crisis point where it was just like so bad. It was causing so many health issues that it was like, we have to do something. In these photos, you would see people like holding handkerchiefs over their mouths just to go outside. They would regularly mm -hmm. cancel like high school outdoor sports mm -hmm. because of the smog that was so bad. And this is two decades before they introduced catalytic converters. Mm -hmm. So I guess, again, this is another example of something that was so self-evident that there was kind of this collective desire to address it and take care of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another one of the problems with EVs now is you could argue that internal combustion technology in terms of like emissions controls, you know, catalytic converters, you know, particulate filters, whatever you want to, you know, whatever, hybrids, whatever, have have lowered the smog down to a level where, I mean, there's still like smog alerts in the LA area, but they're like, I don't know, I want to say like five or six a year. It's few and far as between. As opposed to like every day. Yeah, they're few and far between and they're largely in certain geographic areas in Southern California, at least, where there's the wind doesn't go through.